Hello YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here and welcome back to another episode here on the YouTube channel. In today's video, it is our brand new save. We've done Barton in the Riser Nation here in Scotland and well, it's going to be the first couple games in the save. We are going to give you the Anan Athletic game because it is the first official game that we play, but more importantly, it's all about the Kilmarnock game where we play against a Premier Division side. But if you're astute, you will see we've only simmed a couple of days and we're already back in an episode. So something must have happened. If you are enjoying the content, give it a like, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and let me know if you're doing a Rise of Nation save on your current save. The main reason I'm here is I'm pretty shocked. I've never actually seen this come through this early on in a save. We've only been here for a couple of times and the Dumbarton chairperson is already looking to step aside. So yeah, um, already looking at a takeover. Hopefully an investor comes in and just pumps some money into the club. That would be ideal, uh, but hopefully it'll be okay. In terms of settling on a tactic, I haven't settled on anything to note yet and don't worry about the roles too much. Maybe the back four roles and the winger roles are here to stay. Um, looking at the team, uh, we have two very good left backs, but Greg Young doesn't play because he's more of a defensively minor left back um we have a decently good right winger and we have obviously a very good striker. I went through this in the first episode. So I think to get the best out of everyone is to actually put him into a very standard 4-4-2 and then do what I was doing at Wrexham at the end of the save, starting in not balanced in the main tactic, but starting in balance like we did in the big game tactic and then switching in and out if we needed to. Um, so what I've done is created a Dumbarton 4-4-2 plan, see how it goes in pre-season and a defensively minded mind where two defensive wingers, some inverted foot, you know, you know, wing backs um, and actually looking to shut up shop quite a little bit in a balanced system. I think switching between the two will get us some points um, and especially in those bigger games and hopefully against Kil Kilmarnock, uh, we do well enough that you can see that system. But yeah, look, never seen this happen. It's only been a few days into the save and there we go. I've obviously signing some scouts and stuff. I've nothing to write home about, just, just filling out the staff so we can do some scouting. Um, and I have made a transfer bid for one player, um, but it will be interesting to see if we can get him in or not. Probably the best way to show you is just by going in here. Um, just did a scout, a scout for who was the quickest player that we could get. Um, and Paul Komalath came in, got him on trial, wants to be a target man. We'd put him just up front alongside Michael Roof and go, boys, put it into space and off you go. Um, in saying that, though, we've already, after making a bid, had Clyde, who didn't even know the player existed until I've put him on trial and made a bid, come in as well. So that would really present a large chunk of our wage. Uh, you know, looking at the squad, I think we definitely need a defensively minded midfielder for sure. Um, and then outside of that, it's just all about managing the team and having as many players fit and available. We are a part time club, so there's not much else we could really do. Uh, with that being Said. I'll see you guys for the first official game that we play. We'll get through a couple games in preseason. We're currently live on stream, so links down below to come follow us live. And we'll go through and let you know about any transfers and if the board decides to sell the club. Here we are, YouTube, our first official game in the Via, Via Play Cup. Um, obviously, this is a competition that I don't know nothing about. Not, I've really paid too much attention to what the Via Play Cup is. I think it's kind of like what the Cabaret Cup is in England, I think. Um, and yeah, now look, uh, I'm very happy to be in the competition because no matter what happens, we're going to make at least 21K if we get pumped by every one of the sides. And uh, to be fair, uh, and an Athletic should be beating us. Uh, Kill Maroc should be pumping us. Uh, Patrick Fischl probably should be beating us too because I know who they are and there we are. And Spartans are in our division and maybe we should beat them for a little bit more prize money. But yeah, be interesting to see how we go. Now, preseason has not started particularly well, but whatever. Uh, I played the 4 4 2 and I was really aggressive in it. And to be fair in this game, if you look at the, if you take away the school and look at the stats, we had better XG, better pass completion, more shots. Uh, but yeah, this is a club. If I can go over and have a look at Broxham, uh, Broxburn Athletic, semi-professional club, not even in the division below us, in the Highland division, the division below that, and we lost 4-1. So uh, yeah, and it wasn't like they have any wonder players or anything. Um, because it's pre-season and it's our first pre-season, I'll give you guys the goals. Very shock result. I went in this game, I could play any sort of tactic and get there, but uh, you'll come to see that it's it's mostly set pieces. So maybe we need to make a change in the set piece, uh, how we set up, maybe defensively. Crichton, our club captain, getting done for pace there, and then they hit us on the break, so there we go. Uh, we eventually got a goal back as well. 
of course, in the white for those that do not know. Um, but yeah, uh, we got a gold back here. Bull fan to Carlo. The new signing, Como Laffey, who has officially now signed for this game. And we have made one more signing, but we'll go through both. Heads home. We then concede to another corner, which was not fun. Front step ball for Miller. And went to top it all off for Nice in the 38th minute. All coming in the first half. Wilson with the ball. And deflection and in for it long. So not the greatest. We then played Lewis Mouth, who are actually in the division below us, in the Highland division. So it goes EOS and then Highland by the looks of what the pyramid is. So we actually played against a team that is theoretically better or in a better division. And we actually played much better here as well. If we go back into there, uh, we won 4-2. They did they did score the second goal in the 92nd minute. And by this stage, I've actually rotated the team. One of the new signings in there called Galvin, um, play even though they got a 6.6 .6, uh the 18 year old looked fantastic he was in the free transfer market and there's a reason why i signed him if you have a look at the stats uh yeah very dominant now i played the same 4 for 2 how we set up up until this point here and then i actually made a tactical change and with the tactical change we went very dominant and hopefully these guys will see the tactical change is that i just realized that we can't pass a ball so got us off short and moved us into more direct um and the other tactical change here was to uh you know get out one of our strikers to go a little bit more in the wider areas in the half space to really help us and build up we still conceded the first goal which was not good but as you can see here galvin getting nothing for this but quality play from the 18 year old good pass one touch good ball in the roof through heads home from the hilton ball in which is fine um we then have Malcolm who finds the run who finds Gray by this stage we've already rotated and Declan Bryan who is going to be third choice came off the bench and looked amazing and that's a great cultured finish uh, we then actually scored from a set piece ourselves not directly from the set piece and it was a little bit lucky but from the set piece move poor Kelly in goal was already moving for the first shot that got deflected we then win the ball in the counter pressing situation and Wilson found Bryan and his effort yet again a cultured, another cultured side foot finish and then we conceded one on not on the break but you know Clark had more speed both fullback and winger by this stage were you know not a bit leggy probably should have cut it out we didn't 4-2 it's not bad so in terms of tactically on attacking I'm going to stay on that against Anand Athletic I think it's important for the team to learn the system we're going to get beat anyway I would imagine here against a division one side or you know uh, I think they're in league one so um we'll just double check that here yeah, League One, and in League One, the division above us, they are predicted to get relegated. So maybe we could win this game and go after them. Um, but the tactical side is attacking. Instead of being on shorter and a bit of a higher tempo, we've actually moved into fairly wide as well. Uh, folks in play left and right, standard high tempo. Just just play a little bit more. Still in the early crosses and still looking to pass into space. And I'm still playing for set pieces in the lower level. They're generally pretty overpowered. Uh, in terms of what we're doing, which has changed on here, this has stayed the same. But I've actually told our keeper, you know what? We don't look good when we play out. We don't have the players to play out. Pump it long. Uh, we'll play proper 4-4-2, Brexit footy uh, in the lower divisions, and we'll work on an actual system later down the track. And I moved us off a high lane of engagement and looking to press a little bit more into a mid block. And since doing that in the second game, we can see the 92nd minute, but they really didn't have much. When you come to look at our centre backs, the main reason for doing this is Mark Dunan is not the slowest, but not the quickest for this level. And Sean is the same. Uh, so with that being said, get them dropping a little bit deeper. But that is the team here as well now in terms of the, new, the two new transfers these guys probably have already clued on who they are now Matthew Shields I signed in real life but obviously not me Paul uh, Komalafi was tempted to not sign him after seeing what uh, Declan did in the last game but I think Declan off the bench is a third choice striker with Paul and Roof is not bad I also think seeing Paul actually play a full game peeling wider into these half spaces could be good and it might be something I'd do with Roof on the other side is telling him to do the same thing as the two advanced forwards um, there is t temptation to play him as a target man if we're going to go long and tell this guy to be the one flicking on and stuff but I I want him using his pace, um, you know, at six foot one, aiding acceleration 15 pace. So the advanced forward roll to me works a bit more, but um, yeah, I want him to do that. I almost tempted to put him on poacher too, just get him on the last man, but doesn't have the technicals. I understand why he wants to play target man on support or attack, but uh, yeah, I think Paul was fine as an advanced playmaker. And then Galvin was just on the, on the, um, 
on their free agent list, released from Celtic, went to the championship, didn't get a contract after being there for a year. Important to note, in our division, in the second division, well, the Kinch League 2, so the fourth division in the pyramid, you can actually have long-term trials, four-week trialers, play free, up the three games of the league at any given time. So if you really go on an injury crisis, we can actually sign anyone off the free market to play free, game, free games for us. I, I don't say it with the three, unfortunately, unless I really focus. But yeah, Brett Galvin, for me, is someone that I thought we had to bring in, you know, bit more defensively minded, right? 15 determination, great physicals for this level. I'm naturally very quick for this division. So on the break, he's pretty good. He's fairly consistent too, which is great. And more importantly, when you look at him as the box to box, decent finishing for this level, decent first touch, can pass, can tackle uh, as well. And I think this guy is going up and down with work rate speed, being in the right area. I'd rather give a guy that's 18 and has a bit of potential to come in and not just come in, play first team because he fits what I want to do in this 4-4-2. I am still very tempted to move uh, Wilson out of this role and have him off the bench as an aggressive substitution. And I might look to the loan list to hopefully get a couple of guys in um, that are a bit more defensively minded. Speaking about loans, we don't have another centre back at the club. We've only got the two centre backs here, which makes things very interesting here at the moment. Um, but yeah, uh, with that being said, I've... Uh, Got two guys maybe coming on loan. In terms of the outs, we have actually done some stuff on the outs as well. We let Russell McLean, who was eh, uh, go. Um, actually, no, not Russell McLean. I don't think I let you go. Maybe I did. I can't remember if we let you go now. Third of the seventh, I think that was after we're done. Yeah, Aaron Lyons definitely left under me. I let him go on a free. Um, just, yeah, obviously he was on 300k a week, so get the wage off, pretty much pays for Como Luffy. And then Ryan Wallace was the same, was on 300k, a 300 pound a week, not 300k a week, 300 pound a week. Um, and same thing, you know, as much as he's decent, can take a corner, stuff like that, just straight away, mate, you're two star. No point having the wage on, someone come in for a free for you, get him off, because it means we still got 715 in the budget, even though I'm trying to not spend it. All right, so this is the team here for your first official game. As long, Pignantello, or Carlo, uh, Duran, Sean Shields. Now, I'm just going to confirm that Crichton is left and right, and Duran... Probably should be the other way around, to be fair. Shields is fantastic, and obviously look at him go. Vada, Wilson, Galvin in his first game for us. And Hilton, Roof, and Como Laffey. Hopefully, Como Laffey gets in this advanced role out wide and starts going crazy as well, getting some notifications. And let's see what we can do. Uh, Como Laffey can get the number nine. Brett Galvin can get the 19 for now. And then... There we go. I think Paul Comaluffy will get us promoted by himself if he gets going. Um, I'm going to tell him to go and enjoy the game and not have too much pressure on him. I, I believe in the boys, so let's go. And I also didn't put any tactical thing. In the first game, I did what I did at Wrexham. Don't press the wingers and, you know, don't tightly mark, but, you know, do this and show a week of foot. I think it overordered the guys, especially in the lower levels. My biggest tip is don't make it too complicated at the start. If you have a team that's really, really dominant for the level and you feel after a month or two months that you go, okay, I'm going to win the league fairly easy, maybe then start already implementing a system that's a little bit more tactical, uh, you know, has a bit more tactical strain on the team, cause them to think a little bit more, stuff like that. I don't know if we're that sort of side, so I'm just going to go normal 4 4 2 and see how we go. So, Anna Athletic, I probably should actually have a look at their actual squad here. We'll do that in game. Lining up in a 4 3 3. Nice. We're, of course, in the white. Let's just go see what we're up against as well. So they've got Greg Fleming in goal, who's air. Ryan Murr's okay. This guy's already dead at center back, but 18 long throws. I don't know if I have a long throw specialist, but we probably should set that up. Uh, Willie Gibson. Okay, he's very good for this level. With technicals. K Nugent. Galloway. Chris Johnston. And Finley, across the deer, is very good for this level. Okay, and he's worth over a mil, so interesting. Here's what it is. That's fine. For me, it's all about how does the system look, and maybe today might be a day we get to test the defensively minded system too. I actually need to make some tweaks to that system as well, um, which I'll definitely do. Now, Kiel Monarch, who are in our division, have just got one new up against Spartans. Who I can't wait to see what happens in our first league game. Straight away, though, even though we're not playing a defensively uh, a possession-based system, got 65% of the ball. That's very odd. Free kick, though, and in a very good area. And uh, free kicks generally go in on Football Manager. So we might be 1-0 down here to Anan Athletic. Gibson. 
Hopefully hits the bar, puts it over, hits the wall or something. Goes short, wow. And in the end, Douglas puts it wide. Didn't shoot, went short. Interesting. We get away with that one a little bit. We look at the stats though here. Five shots, five attacks, not a highlight. 65% possession. I think in our first competitive game, we're pretty happy with this. I think this is not too bad. Time is ticking away. Shields. I will work on getting some long throws done if we can. Vata though. Good ball back. See, Kobalofi. Como Laffy, his first official game for us, the new number nine, back stick, heads home. Reason why I put him on the right-hand side is because uh, we do have Vada, who's a 70-year-old, coming inside. So Shields should get more crossing opportunities. Good touch from Shields. And in the end, a great ball. And he's good in the air um, with the six-foot-one physicality for this level. And we are actually leading 1-0 here. Eight, nine shots, eight on target. We are dominating against a Division One side, or a League One side. So there you go. Hilton, Carlo, backstick ball, Vata. Are we going to win our first game in charge, boys? Are we going to win our first game in charge? I was so worried after losing to a uh, to a, a amateur club, two divisions below us in our first game of preseason. But I think it was mainly we're just trying to do too much in the tap diff. Here we go, boys. Here we go. We're two new up here. This is brilliant. Now, I'm not going to move into the defensively minded tactic just yet, but I definitely think we should at some point. I think this is a perfect game to test it out. And by the way, boys, this is money right now. This is this is us going, okay, we beat Adan and Athletic, lose the next few games, beat Spartans. That could be the difference between, you know, an extra 20K in the club. So definitely worth looking at. Now, the time is ticking away here. We've looked pretty good out here. So I'm going to move into the 69th minute. Now, I do need to make some changes to the system because we're on, like, shorter passing. I definitely think we need to go to some more standard still. Still happy to leave us on the underlap and stuff. And I think we still distribute probably a little bit more slowly now. But, yeah, and long. We block and trapping outside. I think that's fine. So straight away, Shields is going to come in for where Vatter is. And we're going to bring in Greg Young, who's decent in this sort of role. I think that's perfectly fine. I also think that Hilton's had a pretty good game as well, but I think Ross McLean is decent at being a bit more defensive, so we're going to get him out there as well, which is fine. Declan Bryan's going to come in, and Roof will come off, and Declan Bryan, who is, I think, left-footed, will come in on there as well. Might peel him into being wide too. He's free. And I think Finley Gray is going to come in here for David Wilson and more as a, you know, maybe as a Mazzal on support, really help out in being an out ball sort of thing. Okay, we'll do that. Hopefully we don't can see from this highlight. And Carlo does well, wins it back. And now we're going to just go into a more defensively minded system and try and see this out. Hopefully this is not a highlight. Looks like it's going to be because I'm trying to make a change. Always the case. Good save from Long though. And we're going to keep our clean sheet. Always the way though, in Football Manager, you make a change and there'll be a highlight. And usually for the other team. 70 minutes here. We go into that more defensively minded system. So now I'm just looking to go, okay, we've done what we needed to do. Now we set up shop and we just don't do nothing now. Now this is about ticking the game away. Already on a bit of time wasting. System I'll move into, you know, roughly 70th minute. And it was a big thing for me at Rex and was switching in. Wow. Uh, Spartans have just come back against Kill Morocco and are winning. That's odd. We just won 2 0. Defensively minded system saw it out. Big tick. Had more of the ball. Had more shots. And we win against a team that is above us in the divisions, but is bet to come back down by the looks of things. And well, we're currently top. So Kill Morocco scored late, I'm guessing then. Yeah, there we go. The Spartans came back, went ahead, Kilma Rock then won through Lions. I wonder if that's the same Lions we've had last year. No, it's not. Okay. And then won in the shootout. So there we go. We're currently top, boys. We're currently top. Unreal. That is superb. Look, very happy with that. Now, big part of today's episode is we're going to give you a game against Kilmarnock, who are in the top flight. We're going to see that in a second. Do not go anywhere. 
It is time, lads, to play a top division side in only our second episode of the save. Uh, let's go and have a look at Kill Marnock here quickly here. So they've got over a million in the club compared to us. We've actually improved a little bit up to 82K. We're up to 93, then down to 82. I would imagine after this game, we're going to be up again, which is good. Uh, and let's hope that is the case. Now, in terms of in the premiership, uh, and you go to season preview, Kill Marnock are predicted to be in the top flight. So there you go and uh, predicted to be in eighth. They're meant to be playing a five at the back here with their best player being Daniel Armstrong. Um, yeah, we should lose this game and lose it comfortably. Part of me is like, maybe we should go to the defensively minded system. I'm actually going to play the normal system and off we go. Since uh, we last came in though, we have officially signed two centre backs on loan. Start with Milos first. Now Milos, the main reason for signing him was A, free transfer, B, 17, and more importantly, pretty good decision making, has good, good marking and tackling for this sort of level. So I thought as a backup, and he can also be a left back if there is an injury crisis out there. I thought makes a lot of sense. Um, obviously, I wish he was more than five foot ten. Also got a decent right foot. I think this makes a lot of sense on a free squad player. Give him a couple games, especially later on in the season when hopefully we're find out who some really bad sides are, who some good sides are, and give me a loss of those sort of games and make him happy, etc. there. Uh, the next one, though, is coming in from Kilmarnock themselves. And, well, boys, he's going to be one of your starting centre-backs. And that is Ethan Brown. Now, Ethan, six foot three, big tick. Secondly, great left foot, good right foot. Big tick. Thirdly, marking, natural, perfect, good decision-making, physically very well-rounded as well at a young age. And those sort of physicals are more than likely dominant in this division. As you can see, straight away since coming in, leading League 2 player, his contract isn't too bad. I actually signed him to a squad playing contract um, and they wanted 20K per week for the duration alone when playing 35 per week when unused um, is uh, what they're paying him. But I'm only paying 15 bucks. Uh, if he's playing when he's on loan, he gets $15 and zero on a free. Now, if I played him as an important player, I would have, but I uh, would have had to pay nothing. But without me seeing a scout report, I heard on the sign of course, I'll say, look, I pay 15 pounds a week just to keep the squad happy as a squad player. But if he plays more minutes, I'm happy. What I'm hoping happens here with Ethan is he has a very good season and they let me bring him back on loan again next year. There's also, 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 also the potential that, uh, you know, we could maybe sign him later down the track from Kilmarnock when his contract is about to expire towards the end of next season. And that's something that I'm, or the end of this season, sorry. That's something I'm keeping an eye on as well. I'm hoping that getting Ethan on loan, making him play week in, week out, put him on squad player, but playing him as an important player, making him really happy at the football club might be enough to get him in over the line for next season. That means that if you look at season preview now, we are now predicted to finish top um, and we do have some really good players. Apparently all my players are now no longer getting into the media dream 11, which makes no sense, but yeah. To of the team is the exact same side that did win the last game out only Milos has come to the bench and Ethan can't play against his parent club but uh, let's go play Kilmarnock and still see what we can do and look, I just want them to go out there, play football and be happy, boys. Like, at the end of the day, I don't expect much. It did go 2-1 down to Spartans, though. They got Will Dennis in goals, who looks like a decent goalkeeper on loan from Bournemouth. Joe Wright's not 100% fit, but yeah, you can already see a bit more quality than what we've got. Jack Sanders is a physically a very decent centre-back. Um, hopefully, as we go up through the ranks, maybe something like him becomes available to us. Robbie Dees, yet again, very good. Matt Kennedy, not too bad as well. Uh, Roy McKenzie, got good pace as a defensive midfielder and not bad. Very well round the play there. Tom Davies for this level is okay. Uh, Andrew Dallas in the hole, not too bad. Uh, Liam Polworth is okay. And Kyle Vassell, people may know the name, um, has been banging around the lower levels for many a time. Looks very good. And that's two cuts in Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland. And yeah, okay, we're in trouble against him. Uh, Daniel Armstrong's on the bench, which is great. Thank God. They've also got Hohara as a backup goalkeeper, people may know too. Stuart Finley is a name that rings a bell to me somewhat for some reason. Scottish cap, termination, physical. Ah, they're a much better team than us. I expect to get beat. Now, I'm hoping what happens here is we get all the sort of revenue for getting a, a pretty good turnout fan-wise. It's a pretty small stadium. You know, we've got no other side uh, of the stadium. Um, you know, it's just a parking lot. And there's a couple of ambulance trucks in there by the looks of things. Eh, I don't really mind. Kilmarnock already on five points. They've already played three games. So they've played another game in between all this, which is odd. So they're 
played and athletic and beat him by the looks of things. Okay, nice. Let's see what we can do. Straight away, though, you have to concede the shot. We have a highlight. And Wilson chips one. Carlo was a target. Fools the Vada, who is the 70 year old's going to play for me with his pace. I just think pace is king at this level. Turns inside, finds Galvin. Wilson, good football. Shield's got to cross one back stick now, surely. Gets there, cuts it. Vada. We lead 1 0 versus Kilmarnock in the Visa plays, in the Via play cup. I will say they haven't got 100% full strength here, but we're one new up against a premiership side, lads. We are one new up against a premiership side. Is this going to be easy? Is, is Scotland like the easiest thing to do? Is that what, what's going on here? We're one new up here, boys. Are we just going to win the Via Play Cup like first season? To be fair, if I, if I was to win this competition first season, it'd probably be a little bit of... Uh, this is unrealistic sort of thing for me, and I might actually disincentivize me or kill my immersion. But yeah. Anyway, we hit away this one. Falls the Davies in the box. Good tackle. Falls the right. He hits, and uh, just like that, we're brought down back to earth, and it's 1 1. Good strike. Maybe a better goalkeeper than Long would do difference. You know, I'm so used to Dominguez in net for Wrexham that, uh, you know, the world class keeper saves a lot. Uh, but yeah, uh, at this level, anything of a decent strike. Is going to be hard to uh, hard to stop. Right, had just enough time. Long probably after getting hands to it, probably disappointed that he didn't save it. How's things stand though, boys? 1-1 one, one here. We'll take it. McKenzie's now. Dallas. Watson. My dear Watson. Polworth. Overlapping run here to Davies. Okay, we're starting to get opened up here. Duran heads. Vassil picks it up in the box though. Vassell. Blocked. Back to him. McKenzie. Beats one. Cuts it. Goal. 2-1 down. We believe for we believe what for thirty one minutes that we're going to be fantastic. Eh, I don't mind. That is okay, boys. But actually, if you look at the stats, I played fairly well. And if we can make it two two, maybe we move into the defensively minded system here and actually play for penalties. That would be interesting. Hilton cuts it. Vada left foot falls to Gavin. Oh, unlucky. I think Vada's got to cut that. But yeah, Shields early cross. Hilton Shields back stick. Komalafi, handball. Oh, it was off hand, Komalafi's hands. Unlucky. Look at the stats, though, boys. Eight shots, five, five shots, two. Both their shots and targets gone in. I think we've played sensationally well. This is very positive for the rest of the save and rest of the season. Dennis now goes long. Good header by Sean. Roof does enough to force a turnover. Sean, Galvin, Wilson needs a runner. Komalafi. Galvin, Shields, Grable in Nevada, numbers in the box, Komalafi's there, it's 2-2, great football, great ball into a channel, good cut from Vada, and Como Laffy scores yet again with his noggin, six foot one, get the pace at the back stick and get him headering balls, and I think he's going to be fantastic, he now has two goals in two games for us, and I can't wait to see what his league numbers are going to be by the end of the season, but a good little ball into Komalafi, and it is 2-2, two, two. we love it boys, half time 2-2, two, two, brilliant, we're doing fantastically well. There we are. I think I've said the wrong things. I didn't really get a very good reaction out of him. We're dominating here, boys. 12 shots, 8, 5 shots, 2. Mate, we're staying front foot. Stay on the front foot, lads. Stay on the front foot. A few bookings out there, but so be it. 60-odd minutes. Paul Worth goes for goal, and Long sees it hit the bar. I didn't even make an attempt for it. It's going to be a corner. Great game of football here by Dumbarton. The Suns are marching. Long, good save. He can make a save, boys. Redemption for letting the other one in. The first goal. This time he gets hands and parries it over the bar. Have to get through this highlight right now. Wilson heads away. Davies now. Polworth. Davies. Shields could have let it run. Instead, we're going to get away just in the nick of time. Hopefully that means the highlight's going to tick away here. Quarter down the other end. If we score, we go straight away into the inverted wingback system. I'm telling you, he's all that right now. Shields, Wilson. Shields can whip. Steady goes himself. Left foot, Dennis makes a save. Played all right there. Probably too far away to think about penalties, but I'm just going to have a look at who can take a penalty. 
Four penalties, Roof. Ten penalties probably shouldn't take him off. A lot of bookings out here, not going to lie. Uh, Vada can't really do much out there. I'm going to bring Greg Young on and get Shields into this role and actually get Greg Young to go more fullback on defend and just get Shields to go more winger on attack. I think that's what we're going to do. Now, is there anyone on this team that can take more than like six penalties? That's the question. Seven penalties for Bra M Malcolm. Kevin Orsi's got nine penalty taking and Declan Burns got eight penalty taking. Okay. Brian Malcolm's going to come in for Galvin, I think. I think that's going to be another move in there. I'm only going to make the two moves for now. I think we sound the attackive system here as well. I, I feel like we've had the better of the game, so off we go. I want to maybe bring Roof off, but he can take a penalty where Comer Laffey can't. Declan Brian can take a penalty. I'm going to bring Comer Laffey off. I know he scored the goal, um, but I think we do that. Orsi can also take a penalty. Can Hilton take a pen? He can. Can Carlo take a pen? No, he's only got four penalties. All right, that's going to be my last change. Is going to be Orsi's going to come on for Carlo in the last gasp of this. Still think we still on attacking, though, because if we get a goal, then, yeah. Hilton, Carlo, Malcolm, Hilton. Carlo, ball in blot. Wilson, good tackle. Malcolm, oh my God, he hit the bar. Oh, off the bench, he could have been a hero. He strikes the under of the bar. We've been dominant, boys. We have been dominant. I don't think there's any extra time. Oh, this would be... No way, lads. Oh, it's heartbreak. It's heartbreak in episode one already. We've dominated Kilmarnock in the top flight. And they have scored in the 90th minute to win the game 3 2. You gotta be kidding me. Nah. Oh, corner, come on. Someone be a hero. Hilton. Back stick. Duran. Oh, it's over the bar. It's over the bar. Oh, what a game. Oh, that is so, so unlucky. It's finished Dumbarton 2, Kilmarnock 3. They've done nothing all day. They had five minutes in the first half where they went crazy, scored twice. We dominated them for a full 45 minutes and they get their only highlight of the second half in the 90th minute and we get done. We play a premiership side in our second ever game. And we were the better side. We had better XG, more shots, better pass completion, and even more possession in a 4-4-2 system. I am over the moon with that, boys. Sometimes you get angry when you lose games where you don't deserve, but this is one where you're just going to look retrospective. If we play like that this season, we're going to go up comfortably. That was superb, boys. That was superb. We should have won that. Trust the process, boys. They are all up for it. Very well done. Awesome, lads. That's the end of the episode. Look, at the end of the day, lads, at the end of the day, I'm not expecting to win the Viva Play Cup. Right? I'm not expecting to win the Viva Play Cup. But the Viva Play Cup has some prize money. And with that prize money, we have to, have to, have to just be as competitive as possible. And we're competitive, you know? If we could somehow finish third for 26K, it's better than coming fifth for 21. So with that being said... I, I think that's a good start. We've been a team above us already in the division. We shook the hell out of Kilmarnock. In terms of the next episode, though, lads, I think the next episode has to be our first league game against uh, bon Bonnie Rig Rose. Um, and considering what we've just seen in episode number two here today, I really think we are going to probably be pretty damn competitive in the league. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for checking out episode two. Catch you guys later, and bye.